Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's and I'm looking at another Range Rover Sport here. It's a 3.0 SD V6. So we've got the bonnet open here, it's this engine. It's a 3 litre V6 diesel. So I'm here inside the car now, 68,000 miles on the clock. It's got a restricted performance. Engine management light on there. Exhaust filter full. Restrictive performance sign. Okay, so a little bit of story with this one is he's had this at a garage. Um, so he had the engine management light come on and an amber light for the for the DPF warning. Um, now I'm not too familiar with the region process on this, but what he said to me is he had the amber light come up for this and he was told by the vehicle on here a message drive the vehicle uh, at 40 miles per hour to clean the DPF uh, he drove it he drove it for 40 50 miles um, but the light stayed amber he's now taken it to a garage who have cleaned the map sensor um, after they cleaned the map sensor the light has turned red for the exhaust filter and they've basically told him that they don't know what to do, they don't, they don't know how to fix it. So he's found me and hopefully I can sort this out for him. So here I'm using the Top Don Phoenix Plus uh, diagnostic computer here. I'm looking into the ECM. So we have a few codes here, P24634, and that's a confirmed code there for the soot restriction on the DPF. Pending code is the correlation between the manifold absolute pressure and P1 P0107, manifold absolute pressure voltage circuit below the threshold. So I don't know if that's just because they've unplugged the pressure sensor or what, because he has told me a garage has been messing around with this, but they ended up saying they didn't, didn't know what they were doing. Uh, throttle actuator control motor circuit range performance. So hopefully it doesn't need a throttle body. It is accelerating, so... He did drive it here. Let's go inside. Read the data stream. So we're going to find the throttle position there. Take those manifold pressure sensor readings. Okay, so if we look at the manifold pressure sensor there, it says it's on 36 psi. Uh, DPF sud 66%, manifold pressure voltage 0 0.01. So these two, this and this, is definitely not right. DPF a little bit, a little bit high, but not at 100%. So accelerate the vehicle. Those pressures are not changing. So there's obviously something wrong with that manifold sensor. Just gonna pull off this clip to get into the manifold throttle there position. Let's get this off. Get the light on. Let's see if that moves position. Yep. So that's moving as we move that. So if we press it all the way down, we need to see if it's sticking, which is common on these. You can see there, yeah, that's sticking. So I'm going to use this file here to uh, file down a little bit of the wall of the throttle body. So I'm just going to get that in there. Just file around here, just, just to smooth it out so it's not sticking. So if I run my file left and right like this, just by rubbing it into the housing there, you can see that it's leaving that little line there, just there in the middle. So I'm going to keep rubbing this until I get down to that line. So it's sort of like when you're, if you're, um, if you were doing the head of a car, you know, and you'd keep the head, you'd keep going across the head until 
all of these lines just for here. So there's one line there that we're not reaching there. So we're just going to keep go going across this left and right until we can reach that. Now that that's done, we're going to move up to the top. Or to the top part here. We're going to do that as well now. It's already just started. You can see inside there the amount of the amount of carbon that's building up from that uh, EGR valve there. So when you're finished, it should just be like that. Nice and freely moving. Now that might look easy, but that takes well over an hour of um, filing around. You do get a cramp in your hand after a while. It takes a fair while to do, if you're going to do it properly. Right now we've started the engine up and we're going to concentrate on this sensor here, the manifold absolute pressure sensor, map sensor, or boost sensor as some people call it. So again, there we've got the live data up there, 36 PSI, 0 0.01 on the manifold pressure sensor. So just here in my, in my van box, I've actually got one of these in the van. Didn't have that ready for this car, but I do have one in the van here. So we'll get, we'll get this fitted on and have a look at the live data, see what the difference is. So this is a T25 torque split there. Get this open up. Pull that out. Leave that over there. We'll get the new one in. Plug it back in. And we'll screw that back down there. Start the engine back up. Come over to the live data there. You can see 14.5 psi, one volt there, pulling, pulling on the voltage. So we're back inside the car, and if we accelerate the vehicle, this, these numbers should increase. There you go. So that's working now. So now I'm going to use this JLM kit as JLM spray gun for the DPF fluid. I'm going to use the winds fluid on it, and it's connected to the uh, Milwaukee compressor. So now I'm just under the car. Turn the light on there. Come around here, the other side of the AdBlue injector. And we've got the DPF pressure hoses here. This is after, this is before the DPF. So we're going to open that up. So now we've got that disconnected. I can just connect up one of my own hoses here that runs to the spray gun there I've got. So I'm trying to do it one handed. So I've used a pair of those pliers to open the clip and that there just to slip over the hose and pull it off. I've got the spray gun here with the hose running back to the compressor there. Just going to squeeze the fluid into the DPF. So we're just going to hold that press there for a few minutes. It takes about five minutes or so until the complete bottle is, is pushed in there. So that's just connected up onto the DPF there. Okay, now that's all finished. Now we can put away our holes there. Okay, we start the engine up. Give it a few revs to clear out that fluid that we put in. Now I'm going to go on the diagnostic engine off, ignition on, and clear the codes. So I've got no DTCs there now. We'll go back and load the codes again just to make, just to make sure. Read again. I'm going to start the engine again, run it for 20 minutes and take it for a test drive.
Now I think what we'll do just to get the soot levels down as well is to run a dynamic regeneration. Let's see what this says. Yes. Must be driven for 15 minutes. Yep. Yeah. So the current value there is 23.3 grams and we need to get it down to 6. down that current value there 21 now okay. do a scan this is no fault codes when we done the road test the it did came up with a Called for the turbo overboost, but it didn't come back now. So we're going to leave that for another video. If it if it comes back, uh, we can order the parts to get that sorted. So that's it. This one's all done. He just on his way back home to Norwich. Now we'll just wait for the next one to turn up. He's coming down from Blackpool, and that's another Range Rover Sport again.